Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to show you guys how you can pause your game in Godot or pause certain objects or nodes within your game. So for instance, I might have a time system from my world time plugin and I want to pause the game to stop time from progressing and plants from growing. So one way you would do that is pick any script from within your scene. So I'll go to my main scene for this demo and I'll just access the root script here. And you want to call git tree which is going to get the root of your currently running scene, which means basically everything else is a child of it. And then you can access the paused property and set that to true. So on ready, pause is gonna be true, which means that anything that has a process or physics process function under this by default is going to be paused and not run its process or physics process. So if I run the game now, you'll see that the time does not progress at all. And that means that these events or signals where the plants would progress through their stages don't get called at all either. And basically everything is paused in the sync. So to show that we can do the same thing in reverse, let's do a await after the paused is set to true, which means we're going to wait for something else to occur or a signal. And I'm also going to call get tree dot timer, create timer. And let's say three seconds, so 3.0 and we are going to await the timeout signal. So we're waiting for this timer, which gets created, and then the timeout to occur. After that, we can continue our code, which will set paused equal to false. So get tree dot uh, paused equals false. Now, of course, getting access to the tree three times is a little bit redundant. So we might want to do something like var tree equals get tree. And now we can just do tree.pause, tree.createTimer, and tree.pause. So let's hit play. And at the start, it should not progress, but after three seconds, pause is set to false and our gameplay resumes. So everything continues running as we would expect. So let's do another example where we actually use a hotkey to pause and unpause the game. So I'll just create a little script here and the root of my gameplay. Um, so let's create that. I'll have an action for triggering the pause. So typically that would be the same thing you use to open a pause menu. So while paused, you could have a UI show. We won't do that in this video, but just for example. So let's say pause action, and I'll name this pause. So now for function unhandled input, if event dot is action pressed, and we're looking for the pause action, then we're going to toggle pause. So I'll just create a new function, talk with pause here. And in here we can say var tree equals get tree. And we'll say tree dot paused equals the opposite. So that's an exclamation mark of tree dot paused. So if it's paused, it's gonna unpause. And if it's not paused, then it's gonna pause. Okay, uh, now we just need to make sure this pause action is added to our project settings input map. So I'll put a pause action in here. And we'll say escape is the key for that. You might have a better key in mind, but um, that should work for right now. So this sounds like it would work and it will work for pausing, but not for unpausing by default, because when we pause the whole tree, it's also gonna be pausing the input from this game level script. So we hit play and we can move around if I hit escape, WASD no longer work. Of course, these animated sprites keep playing their animation, but aside from that, I can't move or select different input from uh, the screen. So it's not really reacting. But if you want a node to still process, even when the tree is paused, then you might want to select the node, go to process, and then choose always here so that it can always process even if the game is paused. So if I select the game level and go down to process and change this to always, then what this actually means is that this node and anything under it that inherits from this is going to always process even if the game is paused. So if I hit play, and we run around and I hit escape, nothing's gonna happen because everything is inheriting from that always process. So if you want a setup like this, then what you're gonna want is another node under this. So we could say, uh, add child node, uh, let's say um, node 2D, pausable, and we pull everything else under here. And then this node, we go to process, and change this to possible. So now this possible mode overrides the always from the first one. So anything under here is gonna be pulling from possible, not from game level. So if we hit play again, and I run around, I'll hit escape, then you can see WASD no longer can run around. If I hit escape again, then I can move my character. 
So it's not pausing the root script here, it's only pausing everything under pausable. Another thing to note here is that in the process modes, there's also one when paused. So if your game is paused, but you actually want a menu to be activated, but only when the game is paused, for instance, a main menu that you had escaped to access, then setting that menu to when paused probably makes sense so that it only processes input uh, from the player when the game is paused so that you can access menu items like save and quit. Now another thing to note is that you don't have to pause straight at the tree level. You could pause a hierarchy within your scene. So for instance, if I go back to this game level script and we export a var pause target, and this can be any node, and we'll assign that to pausable. And now I'm gonna change the mode to inherit. So if we did pause the game level, it would no longer work. Uh, just to show that when we pause the pausable, it's not gonna pause the game level because we're pausing further down in the hierarchy. So instead of get tree here, we're going to do pause target. And if I look for paused, you'll see that there's no such thing, but we can change uh, process mode and set that to process mode disabled, which anything inheriting from it is also gonna be disabled if uh, we happen to set this. So let's get rid of these two lines and we only want this to occur if it's not already disabled. So if uh, pause target dot process mode does not equal, and let's copy this up here, then we're going to disable it. Else we can say pause target dot process mode equals uh, whichever other process mode we want. So uh, that'll generally just be inherit and that should be all we need. So remember, if we happen to pause the game level, it would be set to inherit, which would mean that this would pause because it's the root of the scene. So if we hit escape and I'm gonna hit escape, okay, everything is disabled within the scene except for the root game level node. So I hit escape again. And once again, we're um, kind of unpaused there. So yeah, you don't need to pause the root necessarily, though you usually would. You also have the option of doing the process mode option. So that basically covers about what you need to know about pausing your game, uh, disabling process, physics process, and import for nodes until they become unpaused, which is obviously really handy for the vast majority of games. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future Godot 4 content.